Steven Universe and all associated images are property of Cartoon Network, Rebecca Sugar, and any and all other respective owners. I don't know them all. All footage in this video has been used for the purpose of critique parody under fair use. Please support the official release. The Rose is Pink Diamond Theory, or as I've come to call it to make things a bit easier, the Rose Diamond Theory, is one of the oldest and most persistent Steven Universe theories. As early as her initial reveal in the second episode, it was clear that there is something special about Rose Quartz. And with the reveal of the mural in the Pyramid Temple shown in Sirius Steven, the certainty that Rose was more than just another gem grew. Then hints started to be dropped about the existence of diamonds and the Diamond Authority, and fans, including myself, began to wonder if Rose might be a diamond as it seemed that all four of the prominent figures in the mural might be diamonds. Sworn to the Sword rolled around, showing us definitively that there was once a pink diamond that was seemingly dethroned, and I and a large portion of the fan base was sure that Rose was a former diamond who had lost her station after inciting the rebellion, or that she had surrendered her station and changed her name to fit in better with those gems that might turn to her side. I agreed a while ago to cover this theory in one of my videos, and I expected that I would only be reiterating the facts to a lot of the fans who already knew about the theory when I made this video. But thankfully, the fourth Steven bomb added a lot of new evidence for and against this theory that I can go over instead. This video will be primarily focusing on that evidence. First, though, I want to address the argument that Rose Quartz doesn't have a diamond gemstone and therefore can't be a diamond. The diamonds don't actually have to have gemstones made of diamond. They seem to have diamond-shaped gemstones, as in the tilted rhombus shape that is typically associated with diamonds, but that alone is only superficial and aesthetic. In fact, none of the gems in the show could possibly have gemstones which compositionally match their name. If Lapis Lazuli, for example, really had a Lapis Lazuli gemstone, it would actually dissolve in water. Seeing that her powers are over water and that she literally summons water from inside her gemstone, I find it hard to believe that her gemstone has never gotten wet. I talked in my previous theory video, the collab with King Domo, about the fact that a gem's gemstone is actually not a gemstone as we understand the concept, but instead a very advanced crystal computer. In real life, crystal computers must contain crystals that are compositionally similar, that being crystals which contain silicon. It is for this reason that it is very likely that all gems have gemstones that are compositionally the same, or at least very similar. They most likely only differ in shape and color and what information is programmed onto them. Combined with the fact that my diamond is spoken by sapphire, yellow pearl, and peridot in the same way that a human might address a monarch as my king or my liege, I still say that it is entirely possible that diamond is a rank or, more likely, a title. Keeping all of that in mind, let's move into the meat of this thing. The episode The Answer presented us with the first really compelling evidence in a long time against Rose being Pink Diamond. We see a little bit of the very early rebellion, when Rose and Pearl attack the court of Blue Diamond atop a cloud arena. They make it pretty clear that, at this point, they are the only two crystal gems. We also, at this point, get a good look at a diamond for the first time, that being Blue Diamond. She is massive, even compared to Rose. The images of the diamonds, seen two episodes later in It Could Have Been Great, suggest that all four diamonds are of comparable size. There is also the issue that, for a long time, proponents of the theory suggested that it was her status as a diamond which granted Rose with access to an army large enough to turn a simple rebellion into a full-on war. We now know that she didn't have an army to begin with, and that it was likely the initial fusion of ruby and sapphire into garnet which incited other gems to go to Rose's side, rather than anything that Rose specifically did herself. If Rose was once a diamond, where did her followers go when she defected? There is also the issue that Stephen and Amethyst, two gems who would definitely not have known of Rose's former status as a diamond, have now seen Pink Diamond, at least an image of Pink Diamond, as of It Could Have Been Great. We never see her completely, but Pink Diamond does have her own mural in the entry hall of the moon base, and Stephen and Amethyst are both clearly seen looking around the entire room. If they had seen any resemblance to Rose in the image of Pink Diamond, wouldn't they have said something? Especially with Steven only now learning about the diamonds and his interest already piqued? But there is still persistent evidence to support the Rose Diamond theory as well. Implications in Steven's birthday suggest that a gem can't hold a shape-shifted form indefinitely, so it would seem that we can assume that Rose is the size that she appears to be, but keep in mind that she did shape-shift a womb with which to carry Steven to term, for nine months. It is possible that she is much larger than she appears, and is simply more capable of holding her alternate form than your average gem. 
Rose has been, throughout the series, called a great tactician, been shown to be an amazing fighter, and to have powers that are not equated to any other gem. She was shown to be powerful enough to stand up to a multi-gem fusion without even batting an eye. Even in Pearl's hologram flashbacks, despite the fact that Pearl seemingly thought she had to help Rose, Rose never came across as someone who was out of her element. She never seemed like she was actually in danger of losing a fight despite the fact that her opponent was much larger than she was. This all speaks to Rose being a gem with powers outside of the norm, and it does seem that she may have had a pearl, that being Pearl herself. The only other gems that we have seen with pearls so far in the series are blue and yellow diamond. There is also the original four diamond insignia, the insignia that Homeworld used before the war. We now know the locations of white diamonds, blue diamonds, and yellow diamonds gemstones. White diamonds gemstone is in her forehead and corresponds to the position of the white diamond insignia at the top of the four diamond insignia. Blue and yellow diamond have their gemstones in their chests, corresponding to the position of the blue and yellow diamond insignias in the four diamond insignia, and all of this suggests that pink diamond's gemstone may also correspond with the position of the pink diamond symbol in the insignia, and that her gemstone would be in her midriff, just like Rose's. However, I think that the most compelling piece of new evidence for Rose being pink diamond comes from a scene in It Could Have Been Great. We see a control seat meant only for use by the diamonds. Peridot is not able to activate the corresponding console despite her extensive knowledge of gem technology. Steven, however, is. We see on the control seat that there is a handprint lock, just like the one that his mother used to secure the controls to her secret armory, except that rather than her symbol, this control panel bears the symbol of the four diamonds. This appears to be some kind of biometric lock, and just like Rose's symbol back in her armory, this symbol is clearly meant to indicate the party, or parties, capable of activating it. And yet Steven can unlock the panel as if he were a diamond, or rather as if he bore the gemstone of a diamond. It isn't until he unlocked the system that Peridot could make use of it at all. Remind me, whose gemstone does Steven possess again? It is for these reasons that, despite all the evidence that Rose is not a diamond, I still believe that she somehow could be. Emphasis on could. I am far less sure of this theory than I used to be, but between her skill, strength, cunning, and the fact that her gemstone seems compatible with technology built for the diamonds alone, coupled with the continued treatment of diamond as a title, and the fact that the reveal of pink diamond is seemingly still a spoiler, I can't ignore the continued possibility. Of course, there is more evidence all the time that Rose was just a warrior who was once part of Pink Diamond's court. If she was powerful enough and trusted enough, it could explain everything, including the handprint lock. Honestly, I lean more towards that interpretation these days, but that could always change. Regardless, I'm just as sure as ever that, Diamond or not, there is something more to Rose than what has been revealed in the show so far. And I actually keep getting the sense that that reveal is coming fairly soon. Here's hoping for a short hiatus. Until we find out for sure, what do you think of this theory? Do you believe that Rose was once a diamond? Or has the recent run of episodes convinced you otherwise? Did you never believe in this theory at all? Let's get a discussion going in the comments section down below. Either way, this has been AJ22, and I will talk to you guys later.